Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Blizzard Watch Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Rossi. With me this week are my two fantastic co-hosts, uh, Liz Harper and Joe Perez. It's the week of American Thanksgiving. It's the 17th anniversary of World of Warcraft. Um, so, yeah, lots going on. Uh, let's just kind of get on to it. The Diablo 3 Season 24 was announced. Uh, we now know that it's ending on December 25th. And, and December 5th. My bad. So the 25th is Christmas. Uh, and then season 25, we don't know yet when that's starting. Um, have either of you checked out what season 25 is going to be? Uh, I have not. Uh, I mean, I think, it, I think it sounds really cool, but we're going to have to see what it's like in practice. Yeah. Well, uh, what is for, it? For Joe, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. They're, they're basically kind of taking the idea from Diablo 2 of the skull socket items and they're kind of running with it because instead of his skulls, it's actually like pieces of the various uh, demon lords, like Diablo or Baal or Andariel or what have you. the the four low The four lesser evils will be weapon sockets. They'll be a special socketed legendary thing that you can put in your weapon. Um, the three primes, uh, Diablo, Baal, and Mephisto, will be helmet items. And they're literally pieces of these things' souls. They're they're like soul fragments, and you get a specific power based on which one you're using. Like Diablo's will give you something involving terror, but we don't know what they are yet because it, it, it. Yeah, just, we do. We, oh, we do. Cool. That's I haven't I haven't got a chance to see that. Do you want to go for it? Um. Do you need to look it up while on. I talk some more? Okay, but yeah, it's it's cool. I just hadn't got a chance. I didn't never got into the PTR this time. I tried downloading it like four times, and it just wouldn't download for me. I'm not sure what was going on. As it is, I barely got my world my Diablo install, which is what I'm currently on. If you're watching the stream, I barely got my Diablo install to work this time around. But yeah, I'm 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 super excited to get to actually play with this and see what they do and how they end up working. So the thing is with these shards, they're complicated. They're weird things. Um, each of them has four ranks and they have a unique power and then they can have random attribute attributes attached to them like maybe they have cooldown reduction maybe they give you plus strength you know but that's the extras seem to be randomized um and and the bonuses change as you rank them up uh, so, like, Baal's Fragment of Destruction, you move unhindered through enemies. Each enemy you pass through will be marked by destruction for seven seconds. Each marked enemy that dies removes one second from one of your skills on cooldown. If the Mark of Destruction expires before the enemy dies, you lose 2% of your maximum health as damaged. Uh, yeah, see, they're complicated. They're these yep. big things that are going to make your playstyle like significantly different which i think is interesting yeah that does um so let's see mephisto you deal 15 percent reduced damage while you have three or fewer enemies within 25 yards if more than three enemies are within the same distance you deal 10 percent increased damage per enemy uh Diablo, it does not say if there's not a cap on that that's be, the, the rift gem for of choice yeah man. That that could be wild for doing rifts because you're always running, pulling as many as possible. And if you did that with some AOE abilities, um, and yeah. and like they all have, I'm I'm reading off the ra the initial abilities they have, but they have a special ability that they get at maximum rank. So like uh, the Mephisto one, which I was just reading at maximum rank, killing an elite enemy pulls all enemies within 40 yards to where the elite died. So that would immediately buff this as high as it could go. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, Diablo's is actually kind of interesting. Your cooldowns are increased by 25%. For every skill on cooldown, you take 12.5% reduced damage and deal 75% increased damage. So... Like, your cooldowns are a lot longer, but when you have all of your stuff on cooldown, you are taking a lot less damage and dealing a lot more damage. So, yeah, so you might want to build, just, yeah, you might want to build around that, try and blow everything up front and get your, you know, if you have a channeled AoE ability, use it then. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I can go through all of these. Uh, the lesser evils in Dariel, every time you deal poison damage to an enemy, you increase your cooldown reduction, movement speed, and damage, re uh, damage received. I wonder if that's correct. By 5% for 10 seconds, maximum 10 stacks. Uh, so it's some class. The, these are the lesser evil ones. They're a little smaller than yeah, the greater. They're, and they're for weapons, yeah. Right. Um, that one, I'll notice that they don't. That one doesn't really have a downside. It just has a. It's just got 
upsides, which I means that they're probably going to be less impactful because of that. I hate using the word impactful, but I don't know what else to say there. Yeah. Um, Asmodan, you deal 25% less damage. When you kill an elite enemy, you spawn a pool of blood that increases the damage non-elite enemies receive by 250% in the last seven seconds. Yeah, that would work really well with the Mephisto one, especially the fully buffed one, because you would you yeah. pull out you you'd get to the, the to that of you know the, the elite at the end or whatever you'd pull everything mm-hmm. on top of him and then he dies. Oh yeah, and the, everything's in the two hundred and fifty percent extra damage bubble, and you just go to town. Yeah, that could work really well. Uh, Belial reduce the damage of enemies hit by thirty three percent for five seconds. Damage you deal is reduced by fifty percent. I'm not sure how that one works. That may be phrased weirdly. Uh, the last one is Durial. Your critical hit chance is reduced by 15%. Attacks against incapacitated enemies are automatically critical hits. So there's yeah. some classes that that some classes and builds that will work really well for. Yeah, if you're going like to some of these are definitely going to be yeah. yeah um, that's, that's really interesting. What I what I like about them is that they're all going to change your play style. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, yeah, it doesn't matter which one you equip, you're going to play differently. And I think that's really interesting in any game is like I, changes already, you can make that shake up play style. I'm already thinking of ways to use the uh the ball one. Yeah. Cuz you if you have an ability that does damage to areas around you, you can just run through everything since they're not going to they can't stop you and you can mm-hmm. just chain like like using a barbarian as an example i could totally just chain whirlwind and just whirlwind through everybody and do damage to everybody someone's going to die from that so i won't have to risk taking that amount of damage you know mm-hmm. that's so that, that and that could go really well with the poison one if i have a poison ability i could be using it at the same time yeah there's there's that's a lot that that reminds me a little bit going way back now do you remember the one with kanai's cube where you could you could you basically have an extra kanai's cube power Oh yeah, that was like that was maybe my favorite season. There's that, because that, that was that. You, it definitely was a changer. Yeah, you could do yeah, you could do so many interesting combinations just by being able to shift how you assigned powers. Yeah, that's so that's really cool. We don't know when that season is going to be. Unfortunately, uh, my estimation it'll be five days after the season ends. I don't think they're going to wait twelve days this time. I think it's going to be December fifth. Season ends. December tenth. Season starts. Because otherwise, it would be December like. Like seventeenth, just run right into yeah, run right yeah. into Christmas. Yeah, I don't think they're going to do that. I think it's going to be December fifth ends, December tenth starts, but they haven't announced that yet. Um, but yeah, that that's that's what's going on with that. Uh, I so I thought that was really cool, and I thought I'd mention it. Uh, speaking of seasons, though, uh, the season of mastery started last week for WoW Classic. Uh, I have been playing it on and off, usually at night when I can't sleep. Um, I have not been trying to like get my characters leveled up particularly fast because for me. Um, while WoW classic is mostly just a vacation, it's it's not mm-hmm. really something I'm seriously pursuing. Mm-hmm. But I have to say, I like the experience changes, uh, the quest turn in. It doesn't burst XP on you. It's not super fast. It's not like when you you remember like leveling before uh, Cataclysm, but with heirlooms on. Yeah. Did you ever try it, or even after Cataclysm with heirlooms on, and you just literally blow through zones? Oh yeah. Definitely. It's not like that. It it's still takes you a while to to get off of the tree if you're playing a night elf which i i happen to be um it's still there like the, you still feel like leveling has consequence but it is faster and it, it does feel a little bit better in my opinion um i'm really hoping that they do this again and i would not be upset if they started adding in season bonuses uh like like diablo 3 has but i'm not sure i'm not sure this is going to last a year for people like right now, it, it doesn't. It it's not fast enough leveling to I feel like it's gonna. T- I'm, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. But I think for people who play WoW Classic a lot, they will be sixty if they're not already. They will be sixty very soon. I, I'm sure some of them are already sixty. I think a year probably was a little generous as far as like how long it would take people when they were when people were talking about estimations from because even back in the day, like when we were playing pretty constantly in the old version of Classic it really wasn't a year to get to 60 people were were able to to power level up or get yeah. through there pretty pretty quickly if they really wanted to i don't think that they thought that it would take a year to get to 60 but i think that they thought it would take a year that they could stagger out the releases and and do it in a year and by november of next year everybody would have gotten through it and it would have it would have been satisfying i think a lot of people are going to just even with the 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 adjusted raids i think there's going to be a lot of people sitting around 
for like a month every time waiting for the next thing to come out. I, I don't know, but it is something I'm thinking about. And it is something I'm interested to see how it actually balances out. I haven't heard anything about season of mastery first yet. Um, nobody said, Hey, we've already rated, you know, molten core. Uh, could we have more now, but we'll see what happens <laughs> when, when guilds get serious about it. Uh, okay, see, so. the, thing, the thing about spacing out content, you know, they, you can't time content to be for the first people who are going to finish the content. Like, you can't assume that the first people finishing the content are the ones you need to cater towards, if that makes sense. Because oh, yeah, that's you fair. always yeah, you always have those world first people who are going to zoom through things. They love the challenge and they love the race and that's really fun for them. And they're gonna finish everything like immediately. Yeah, and I think I think but, I don't think either of us are saying that either too, but I think you're right. I think it's I think the average is still gonna Fairly quick. Like, I think Auto Luke and Chad is saying yeah. eight to nine days played, which isn't a whole lot, honestly. I mean, but what they're doing here is they're cha they've changed the spacing on the phase phases. Mm -hmm. And what the phases are all about is basically just raid releases. So it's kind of, it's a different raid release schedule, and they've buffed the raids to some extent. Oh, oh, I also wanted to mention, since I did it, uh, PvP is out right now. They did, they're not waiting for phases three and four. It's It's all in the game right now. And oh my God, am I terrible at it? <laughs> oh my God, have I forgotten how to do old Alterac Valley? Like, it's just, it's not the same. The horde spawns in a completely different place. Uh, it, 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 I just, I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh my God. I did it like, I've been doing PvP as horde. I've been doing it on a torn because when I, in, in the original World of Warcraft, when I played in vanilla, I, I PvP'd on a torn in, in original WoW before Burning Cir Crusade came out. And so I wanted to like see what it would be like. And what it's like is I die constantly. That is that is what it is like. It is Matt's dead. Matt barely had time to look at the enemy before he's dead. And in a way, that is exactly how I remember it. Because before my warrior got geared, I was dying constantly. So in a way, it's like almost welcoming. It's like, yeah, I'm dead again. Just like just like I remember when everyone was always complaining about how OP warriors were. And meanwhile, I was dead constantly. It's like that. So yeah, but it is definitely. It is something to have it early. I think having it now, because you, because when I originally leveled in, in WoW, I their PvP wasn't even in the game yet. Like I don't remember when they added it. It was the, if you wanted to PvP in WoW before, like they added the battlegrounds, you went to Terran Mill. Yep, that was just what you did. You went to Terran Mill and attacked it or defended it, depending on which faction you were. And that's not happening on on Season of Mastery servers that I can tell. Like the Terran Mill fights are gone, and I do kind of regret that. Um, it is something that I think it is so much a part of World of Warcraft, the original experience to me, that that I am sad to see it not there. But aside from that, I, I think it's actually really well designed. Uh, I think they've made some good tweaks. I'm waiting to hear about the raid tweaks and see how, how well those work out. I would like it if they can make it so we don't get a world first, like the day people go in. I would like it if there was a little bit more time between these things. So we'll see what happens. But at this point, we should probably talk about the 17th anniversary of World of Warcraft, because that's what today is as we're recording this. It is WoW's 17th anniversary. Um, what I wanted to do was ask you guys to each share like a, a story about World of Warcraft, and then if, there's, if you guys do that, it seems like it's going well, I might share one or I might not. So I'm going to throw this one to Liz. You got anything you want to talk about with World of Warcraft there? Any, any nice stories you want to share? Anything good? Um, you know, a lot of my favorite playtimes are in uh, Burning Crusade, really, running Karazhan. And there's, like, one memory of Karazhan that I that has stuck with me through all of these years. I was playing a Holy Paladin uh, and healing, and uh, I had my kind of my other healer, there were two healers, was a priest, and we were both, like, snarky, cynical people and we would talk back and forth you know while during the raid we would just kind of gossip back and forth between us and uh we'd gone into the raid and we were like yeah the people the, everyone who's logged on tonight there's this is not gonna work out this is gonna be a really bad raid night and uh we went in and we were fighting who's the guy the optional boss the demon in Terrazan? oh the the, the, like the, the satyr who's downstairs yeah yeah I, I know who you're talking about i can never remember his name either yeah, I'm totally blanking on what his name is. I mean, I want to say Ilgnoth, but that's someone totally no, different. No, it's not Ilgnoth. Um, yeah, 
yeah, I, I know that, but that's the only name that's popping into my head. And uh, so we go in to kill Ilganoth. And you're thinking just, of uh, Ilhoof, you know, that's why. Yeah, Il- Ilhoof. Yep. I, Ter- Il- terrest- okay, terrestrian, I was close. Terrestrian Il- terrestrian, or terrestrian Il- wow, I can't talk today. Sorry, please continue. Words. Um, and like my my friendly priest just like immediately dies. I mean, one of the reasons I played a paladin back then was that I could heal, but I was also wearing plate armor and things could not immediately kill me. Uh, so my priest dies. I'm the only healer there. And the priest whispers to me, and he's like, "Yeah, this is this is a wipe." And it just went through my head. I was like, "No, no, I am drawing a line here. We are not wiping on this stupid optional boss." And I healed the whole fight by myself, and we beat him. And it's like this was so long ago, and I still remember that moment where I had been kind of, you know, I was being that sort of judgy jerk. Kind of sitting in the back thinking, huh, yeah, there's no way. We're just, we're screwed. We're never going to make this. And there was like this one moment when someone else said, told me, no, we can't do this. And I was like, no, no, we can do this. We're going to do this. And that was just, there was like this sort of catalyzing moment that stuck in my head about just all of the challenges in WoW and, you know, just overcoming them and not just overcoming them by yourself. So that does stand out as a moment where I like I kind of pushed the paladin thing to the limit because back then paladins were very much single target healers. We did not have an AOE of any kind. Um, yeah, you had to do a lot of tabbing you know, to heal on a pally. Oh yeah, yeah. You you had a lot of single target heals, and that was that. Like I, uh, I knew one pally healer in particular who like he he did a lot of raid healing. He was like, yeah, if I didn't have frames, this would not be happening. Cause I, I literally oh, have yeah. to play whack-a-mole. This is me playing whack-a-mole. <laughs> Cause I, there's no, I got nothing. Yeah. They didn't even have that thing. Like, I don't remember when it was in- introduced, but it was much later where you, like you could put a mark on like the tank and then heal other people. And the tank would get a fraction of the heals. Do you guys still have that? Yeah. We have beacon of light now. Um, okay, I don't like, yeah, they didn't have we that. had it back then. Nope. I, I know so. you didn't have it. Cause I healed on a pally and a shaman back then. You did not have it. It was really hard. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was. It was. I don't. I don't know why that stuck with me, but it's just like this sort of moment that really hit me and kind of stuck in my head all of these years. Okay. I. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you the names of most of the people I raided with, but I. I remember that moment. Yeah. Okay, Joe. I mean, I got a lot of them. A lot of. I have a lot of fond memories from classic WoW days. Do you want something? Whatever you want to share, dude. You just pick something you want to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I have so many stories. Uh, so one of the ones that r- sticks out with me is I had just moved into a brand new apartment. It was the first time I had not been living at home uh, at my parents' house. It was the first time I was out on my own. I was with my long-term girlfriend. We had moved in at the time uh, and we were pulling, I, I was, we were raiding and we were pulling I want to say it was Nefarian and about maybe halfway through the fight, um, I start getting like this, I hear this piercing sound from somewhere in the apartment. I'm like, okay, well that's weird, but then too weird. I'll just kind of move on with it. Uh, we wind up getting, this is like our second or third, like Nefarian kill. So it's, it's not quite farm yet. We get it down. Everything's going in. And all of a sudden I just, I smell smoke and I'm like, Oh, Oh, that's bad. So apparently the house at, that we had, had the apartment and we lived in the, the attic apartment, the smoke detectors up there didn't work. They weren't wired to the entire house or anything. like. That. Uh, but one of our neighbors downstairs had set the house on fire. Uh, so here I am in the middle of like everybody getting loot and we're doing all the DKP stuff. And then I realized that my house is on fire. I should probably leave uh, to wrangling three cats who did not want to leave the apartment, uh, getting them into crates, getting them outside and waiting for everything to go down. Um, I wound up losing a whole bunch of stuff because the back of the house went up. But that's that's not the heartwarming part. The heartwarming part is what happened after. So we wound up having to move again and like taking stock of everything we lost. And this is like, again, vanilla days, folks. This is before... Like we have all these internet communities before Twitter was really like a big thing before discord was ever a thing. Like the people that you made contact with and, and had been with in game were like, it was a thing. It, and it was still very much a, 
a weird thing for some folks in the world to accept that these people were your friends. So then all of a sudden I get a message because I, we had, I was an officer. Everybody had my phone number, like from one of the people in the raid. And they're like, Hey, are you okay? And I'm like, no, things are a little, little shitty. Explain what happened. Like, Oh, okay. What's your address? Okay. Oh, I'm going to be driving through. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going to be coming through, through, through Buffalo and figure I'd stop in, check in with you, maybe buy you lunch or something. I, I feel bad. I'm like, okay, cool. Give them, give them my address. Person shows up with a truck full of replacement shit. Literally had talked with me for several days, figuring out everything we lost and took a collection up with the guild and replaced everything, literally everything we had lost. Um, and it was one of those moments where I was like, huh, well, shit, internet friends are real friends, aren't they? Uh, but yeah, that was one of those, one of those things. Like it was just because you were, when you were in vanilla and you were with the guild and this one, I'd been with this guild for a while, long, long while, you know, everybody was, you just took care of each other. Like it was one of those things that like, it, it seems so second nature now, but yeah, it was just, it was just one of those things. It made me, made me feel good. So, all right. Uh, do you guys feel like that's enough or do you want to hear one of mine? You're the host. You decide. Well, yeah, I just want to know your opinion. I'm always going to want to hear, I'm always going to want to hear vanilla. Liz? Yeah, yeah, go for it. I want to know. This this is uh, this is a story I've told a few times. It's not a vanilla story. It's actually a BC story, but it's the same people I played with in vanilla. So um, we were doing uh, the you know Karazhan, the same dungeon Liz was just talking about, yeah. and this was just an absolute comedy of errors. Like we were just terrible. Um, I'd been playing Alliance side most of the time, but this was my horde character. This was my shaman. Uh, my my very first shaman, my uh, my orc shaman, and we were doing we were going through Karazhan. Uh, just at one point, we discovered that the uh, warlock ability, the seed of I want to say seed of destruction, but I don't forget what it's called. But whatever it is, it it hits 360 degrees in a sphere around it. So if you use it while you are going up the outside, you know, st- uh, staircase in Karazhan, it will hit all the stuff above you and all the stuff below you. And if you use it close enough to say curator's level, it will pull curator. So curator comes out and, and just destroys us while we are trying to get up from the trash. So we, we rebuff, we, we, we get ourselves ready, you know, the new attempt. We, we actually get up to, to the curator area, get past the really annoying magic shield trash. Uh, We're all set to go, but I have to use the bathroom really badly. So I say, hey, guys, I need five. I, I got to take a bio. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, fine. We'll take five. But it took longer because there was something going on in the hallway of the apartment building we were living in at the time. My <laughs> wife and I had just moved up here. And so I didn't get back for like like 15 minutes. When I get back, I, I get to see my cat, Puck. You, you guys know Puck. I've told stories about Puck. Mm-hmm. Standing yeah. on my keyboard, pushing the three and four button on my keyboard because on screen that's what makes earth shield and chain like chain healing cast. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. I know this. Story. And so I, I, I've come back just in time to, to hear the roar of triumph as they defeat curator for the first time. And I'm like, oh, Puck, come on, get down. I, I pick puck up and, and put her on my lap. And she's like, meow. Cause that's what puck does. I get my headphones back on and they're like, that was amazing. Uh, that was the, Best healing you ever done, Vorka. Vorka was my my orc shaman's name was Vorka. Uh, I'm not exactly original, but yeah. So I'm like, um, and they're like, yeah. I can't believe how you clutch healed everything. How did you keep the whole? <laughs> how did you keep the whole group up like that? That was some great chain heal. And I'm like, yeah. I was in the bathroom. That was my cat. Like, but no, we saw you put Earth Shield on, uh, so we figured you were ready to go. I'm like, no, I just have it macroed so that my focus is just gets Earth Shield automatically. Yep. I, I don't I don't pay attention to it at all. My my cat just hit the button because because she was stepping on the keyboard, and then she saw the Earth Shield go up, and it was pretty, so she hit it again to see it again. That that's what that was. Can your cat heal next week? Man, I have had we've talked about this on the show. I have a similar story with my cat Lou. Yeah. Uh, so with yeah, Ma- that, Max Ramos forty. And also she uh, hated yep. she hated Magma. Yeah, nobody likes Magma. She, like like I had to replace one of my monitors because that cat hated Magma that badly. Yeah, I, I just remember like it's either that story or it's the time that I ended up getting Sulfuros because the a druid healer was determined that I get it 
even though someone else had more DKP than me. So yeah, but, but I wanted to go with that story just because it's a it's a puck story and Puck's she's a sweet little cat. And also a lot of you guys helped save her life. So you know, there that's that's your payback. You get a story about Puck. Um but yeah, that's there I, I think everybody here has got like lots of stories about the game. It it's obviously affected all of our lives. I, I got I proposed to my wife on a molten core run. Um so because she was in the you were in the run. I didn't like, you know, I didn't leave the group because you know, who would do that? Um but yeah, I so I, I did want to like I wanted us to share a couple of good memories about World of Warcraft over its 17 years because right now things are real hard. It's hard to have good memories about stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on right now that's pretty terrible. So I wanted to at least give us a chance to throw out some good this some good stuff. Um, also, I think it's Pilgrim's Bounty today. Yeah, I think Liz said that in the email. Uh, I don't. Aside from there's a night fae critter shape, like one of the forms you can turn into is is from eating a turkey. You can turn into a turkey now. Uh, yeah, you go into, if you're a night fae and you go to the pilgrim sani table and you eat, you learn how to critter shape into a turkey. So you consume the turkey and you become the turkey. I, Some would say which, I'm already a turkey, but. <laughs> I, I have such a love-hate relationship with critter shape. <laughs> Yeah, well, as a shaman, it's like, what? Well, no, I love Critter Shape. I think they're hilarious, but they're all tiny. So you can be a squirrel, or right now I'm a corgi. I would absolutely 100% be a turkey at this point, but you can only use it in rest areas. You cannot use it out, like out in the world or in raid. Well, you can use it when you hit that button for the emergency. No. No? That's gone that, now? The emergency button is there. And but you there's critter shape and wild shape. When you are not in a rest area, critter shape goes away, and it's wild shape because of hit boxes or because of they don't want people abusing it in like PvP or something like that. I don't remember the exact reason why, but like I I, I found this out the hard way. I was all excited. I went and got the corgi one, and I'm like, I show up to raid. And I'm like, hey guys, watch this, and I push my button, and I'm like, I'm a huge dinosaur, and I'm like, wait a minute, what? And then they, I found that out. I'm like, oh, that's sad. So I would totally be a turkey. I would show up to, uh, to raid content this week as a turkey, but I can't be a turkey. I can only do it in rest areas. It makes me sad. Give us sad. free free critter shape. Do it. Hash, <laughs> hashtag free critter shape. Look, if you're really worried about the size thing, then let him turn into a really big turkey. Yeah. Make it oh, a big turkey. Yeah. Easy fix. Easy fix. Although it does remind me of the, the greatest screenshot I think my wife ever took in WoW. Um, and this is a raid story, so I'm going to tell this one because it's relevant with with Pilgrim's Bounty. So with Pilgrim's Bounty, you get those uh, those wands that you can turn people into a turkey. Um, and so during Legion, raids would just run around and just randomly turn people into a turkey because he was bored. And it was during the the thing where we're like uh, it was that week when you did the Zero Quest and you would get uh, to that cinematic scene where Zero would take you into space and you'd be floating there. So my wife plays a shadow priest. That's her main. Um, so she was a turkey. She didn't realize she was a turkey in shadow form in this cut scene. And so she took a screenshot of it and it literally just is a caption of thanks raids. And it was the most hilarious thing I've ever seen <laughs> because it was a shadow form turkey, like just staring angrily at Zira. And it was like that. It was like, if that's not a mood, I don't know what is. <laughs> Sorry. It just was relevant with Pilgrim's Bounty. I, I, I love that. That that stupid wand means i'm gonna have to run around turning people into a turkey oh. yeah it's coming <laughs> no well there that's a good raid night experiment <laughs> yeah i remember like just now nah, that's a halloween one story but we're gonna move on and talk about uh <laughs> the 9.2 data mining i don't want to get too spoilery um so we're not going to talk about specifics like there's some things we can talk about because it's just blatant people are uh, both, crazy with them. yeah both um anduin and the jailer are raid bosses in the new raid. I don't think that should be a surprise to anybody. I think it was pretty obvious that that was going to happen. Um, they specifically said Anduin in the uh, yeah. teaser they did. Yeah. And it, and, it, and I think everybody is pretty much expecting the jailer to be there. Um, one detail I can, I can give out there that I don't also don't think is a spoiler is that he's going to be casting defile. Yeah. So get ready for defile to come back. Everybody. Everybody's I know you favorite. missed it. I love I love having to explain it to a whole generation that never experienced it in the first place. Yeah. Oh um, boy. I will, however, also say that there's one other fight I will spoil slightly. Although, again, I don't think it's a particular su surprise. There's a fight that's being called Lords of Dread. It's a, it's a two Dreadlord fight. It's the ones that you've saw in the Corthia lead up. It's I think it's Malganus 
I can't remember the I can't remember the female one's name. Yeah, it's her. but it, it's two dreadlords. Um, so yeah, the, there's going to be a dreadlord fight. Um, yay! I don't know, but the tier sets have all been data mined. Uh, not going to talk too much about it so far. Uh, I actually kind of like the warrior set because it looks like a steward. So basically, warriors get to be <laughs> albros. <laughs> Um, but people don't seem to be all as happy about him as I am. I, I, I like the warrior one. There was a problem with the warlock one. And I remember when I first saw it, Ooh. I immediately said to my wife, yeah, that's, that's not good. Um, and, and to their credit, it Blizz was like, yeah, the, you're right. That's, that's totally not the way this should look We're we're definitely going to fix that. And, and I think that there's a, a reason to do so, but, uh, some of the stuff that Liz put here in her in her email responding to, to let us know what was coming in is the, the thing I like is the adding mouse over targeting and click casting, which we were just talking about healing in, in vanilla and BC um, mouse over targeting and click casting is something people almost constantly get add ons to do because it's very useful. And I'm interested to see how it works when they bring it in, if they're just going to be bringing in the functionality that we see in so many add ons or how they're going to establish it. The only um, th- the only thing that worries me about that is how that's going to break. Like, yeah, probably. I mean, right now most of my healing is mouse over, and I do it with macros instead of an add on. So it's not. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, but it's twenty twenty one. Why is this not already part of the game? Uh, why do I have to write macros I, for each of my spells? You know, this is a simple one. This should be an easy one. Well, I think it's because there's players like me who I don't, I mean, I'm not going to lie. If they make that the default and there's no way to turn it off, I will probably mm-hmm. stop healing. Well, but. I don't, I personally do not like click casting. I mean, I, I do not click cast. I mouse over cast. I, no, I mean, mouse what, over with hotkeys. But that's what I mean. If they, if they make mouse over like the default and there's no way to turn that off, I, I might be done healing. Like I'm my brain, I, my brain is programmed to do the other way because I've been doing it for so long that I don't think I can. <laughs> But I mean, it's, I, it's I nice doubt that they're putting it in there. I, yeah, I doubt they'll go in and change, you know, the auto, you know, they're not going to change the default. I, I really doubt that. But even bringing they, this in as an option. Yeah, even if they make it something where it's set to default that way, I'm positive there will be a click off box because to to do too much would be writing too much new stuff to make it work. Sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to do that. But, you know, it is interesting to see that, that that's something they're finally bringing in. There's still small things happening. You know, and you know, we're 17 years in, and there's still stuff like this being brought in. There's still spell animations being changed. So I, I'm kind of interested in that. Uh, I'm trying to think. Thanks. Don't want to do any spoilers. Uh, anything else you think we should talk about before we move on? Uh, I, just the the standard disclaimer that with patch 9.2 being data mined to, to all get out right now, take anything you see out there with a grain of salt, uh, because as as we've mentioned multiple times on this podcast. Things can change, will change, and uh, you cannot really be assured of what will make it alive until it is actually alive. So grain of salt on a lot of that stuff. Uh, and if you are testing any of the 9.2 stuff, make sure you give constructive feedback through the normal feedback means, because that just helps make everybody experience much better. Liz, uh, I will I will note that it's not live on the PTR yet. The uh, client is out there and they're data mining from it, but it's not, the PTR is not live. That is going to go up sometime after the holidays. We don't know exactly when, just we know it's going to be sometime after yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. I would have been surprised if it ran Thanksgiving. What with stuff happening? Well, they, they also uh, just, they also just gave everybody an extra week off. So like yep. uh, timelines are getting pushed back just a wee bit probably. But all right. I think at this point we're going to move on to some emails and questions. So if you have a question for the show, please send it to podcast at blizzardwatch.com with the subject line podcast or Blizzard Watch, or sometimes Hey Matt, because that happened this week. Um, or if you'd rather use our, our Discord, we've got the um, Patreon Q and Podcast Questions channel uh, where we take questions. Uh, we tend to go there first because patrons keep the bills paid and all that, and we're going to talk more about that later. Um or you can go to our Q questions channel, which, you know, if you're not a patron, we do understand that some people can't do that. Uh, so we do take questions from there as well. But we do prefer going to the patron first for obvious reasons. Uh, as is usually the case, uh, you guys read these questions because old Blindy over here can't read very well uh, without making things really big. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to say, uh, Joe can go first. 
All right, our first one comes from Pliskin86. Somebody liked Escape from New York. Anyone ever notice that in Avatar, when Jake gets lost the first time out, that scene is almost like for like for the intro cinematic for Mist of Pandaria when Admiral Taylor lands on Pandaria? Um, you kind of assume that I remember a single scene from James Cameron's Avatar, and I don't. I Spoilers, I've never watched the movie. Liz, can you save us here? I've also never watched the movie, so... Um. I have watched the movie, but I don't remember it. Like, seriously, I, I am amazed they're making a big big two sequels thing for it. Because I know it made a lot of money. I know it, it broke box office records. But it was number one for I, a good long while. It might still be. I don't know oh, yeah. anybody who's like an Avatar head. I've never met anyone <laughs> who's like, Avatar, yeah, let me talk about that. And if they were... They're talking about like a little magical kid with an arrow on his forehead or Korra, who is demonstrably cuter than cooler than Aang. But regardless, those are the those are the, the Avatar fans that I know of. I I did not know there was any real interest in now, more Pandora. Now that doesn't mean it's not there. It just means that I didn't know that they were there. Now that said, I think Avatar released in what two thousand nine, I think was when the James Cameron movie released. Mr. Pandaria no was two thousand twelve. It is entirely possible that they took some cinematic uh there's some cinematic crossover or inspiration from it because that's something that happens quite a bit. Uh I'm not saying that the wow cinematic teams like copied something, but there are certain I watch a YouTube channel uh called Corridor Crew and they m- talk about like the back end of like making movies and doing special effects and, and shooting scenes and things like that. And one of the things that I remember watching a long time ago that is, is it seemed to be holding very true is that there are certain uh, keyframes, right? There are things that where you're trying to convey a particular type of, of tale or t- particular type of emotion in a moment, you're going to have key frames and those key frames translate regardless of genre or, or movie or or the, the skin that the movie is under. So it's almost like a framework that you're going to wind up utilizing no matter what you do. So if there's similarities between that scene and Avatar, uh, which sounds like it is very much that that stranger in a strange land vibe. There were movies before Avatar that did that exact type of thing because there were other movies that I thought of. When I saw the Admiral Taylor lands on Pandaria, I mean, we can go to Gulliver's Travels if you really want to way back when it has that same type of vibe, right? It's it's that stranger in a strange land vibe, getting lost, not knowing where you are and being confronted with something that to you or from the lens of that individual character is so new and foreign, despite the fact that you are the foreigner coming into that land. It's a very classic cliche uh, video or, or movie cinematic trope. Right. It's and it's that way for a reason. So if there's similarities between it, not terribly surprised at all. No, there certainly could be. I just I'm not qualified to talk about it. And I felt kind of bad. I honestly cannot remember a thing about Avatar except for the villain. That's just straight up because he's he's real good at being evil. The guy does evil extremely well. Um, All I remember is somebody telling me it was Fern Gully and I just never went to go watch it. So, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> which, which is your mistake is Fern Gully was amazing. I loved Fern. No, no. I watched Fern Gully. I just never went to go watch Avatar because I was like, I know Fern Gully. Okay. I can, I can wait on this. Now, if someone told me that they were making a big budget, spectacular Fern Gully, I go see it just to see what happened. Like, nah, oh that, my was, God, my, how's that, how's that, that was my hipster phase. 2009. Uh, I had to be cool and edgy, but regardless. Uh, okay. I guess we're going to move on. So Liz. Okay, next question. Hello, wonderful watchers. LD Sloth coming at you today with a fun question for the podcast. Do you wake up tomorrow with the knowledge, skill, ability, and motivation? Motivation is always the tricky one. To build (laughs) something from WoW in Minecraft, and you can do it perfectly. You know every measurement of everything. What are you building? Do you want to answer it first? Do you want one of us to? Uh you know, I think we were already talking about this. I think I'd build Karazhan because that's just such a cool environment to wander around in and explore. Okay, mm. Joe? Yeah. I have to think about it. Ash Condi. <laughs> <laughs> I did not I am, have to think about uh, it. I am shocked. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. I seriously, like, if my tombstone looks like Ash Condi, it wouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, it is my favorite model from World of Warcraft. It is a weapon I've had a really long relationship with. Uh, it's still a one. It's still one of the highlights of my transmog rotation. Um, anytime 
I come, I find any piece of gear that's even remotely red or black. I, I start working on ways to get Ash Condi into the transmog. I will make to use that item. Uh, it's just, I really just like that sword. I always have. I think one of the reasons I like it is it's fairly unique for World of Warcraft in that it is still a like boat or of a weapon. It is enormous as you know, like almost all World of Warcraft weapons ultimately are, but it's not chunky or blocky looking. The blade is extremely thin for a weapon that size, Mm -hmm. uh, especially in wow. Most weapons tend to have huge chunky clonky blades, uh, which I mean, sure that'd kill you if you hit somebody with it because it is the size of a tree and hitting someone with a tree is likely to kill them. But Ashkandi actually looks like it could cut you. I remember Going back to Burning Crusade again, you guys remember the Burning Crusade cinematic, right? Yep. That scene of the orc using Ashkandi, when I remember seeing it the first time, I was like, <gasps> like it's just, it is a beautiful, I think it is a very emblematic it, It's a very weapon. classic fantasy style sword in, in that regard. Like it is, yeah. it is gorgeous, eye-catching, uh, looks deadly, is deadly. It, it ticks all the boxes, right? Like it's, it, I am not as much of a fan of it as Matt is. Um, but like, I can, well, appreci- okay. you were exposed to the propaganda of a person who did not understand how great that sword was. That's fine. You're okay. We can go with that. I was going to say Zen, Zen rock was always my favorite, but that's for different Zen reasons. Rock is a, Zen rock is a beautiful weapon. It but, absolutely is. Yeah. That's because I spent a whole lot of time with that before I got rock Vidar. Um, but yeah, so like it is, it is a gorgeous one. If yeah. I, I would have to go bigger though, if I, oh, you don't know how big I'm going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're gonna kill Azeroth with it. I get it. Um, I would probably do Suramar. Like of all oh, the wow, yeah, of all the zones and cities that they've done over the years, I actually do think that Suramar is one of my favorites, and I think it will be for a very, very long time. It is. It feels like a metropolis. It feels like a city. It feels like a living, uh, wonderful, breathing place. And they did a very good job in it. And this is. Uh, not to sidetrack too far, but like anybody who's listened to any length of time, I went to school for architecture. Like that's, I love it. I've, I've, I still have books on my shelf that I pull out and read, you know, about classic architecture and things like that. Suramar ticks a lot of those boxes for me in a fantasy context with how you develop a fantasy city. And like, that's always been a thing for me is ever since I've been playing D&D, ever since I tried to design my own uh, set pieces for tabletop and everything like that, Suramar is that place for me. So much so that I have been slowly over the course of like a few years ripping the 3D files uh, out of the game so that I can maybe try to smooth out, repair, and print uh, Suramar for tabletop because I'm, I'm going to do this at some point, dang nabbit. Uh, but it is an absolutely 100% gorgeous city. And I would absolutely love to be able to recreate it in anything I do, whether it's creative verse, Minecraft. Um, one day it will be printed and I will make my players go through it in real life because I'm going to do that. It's going to be a thing. Um, but it, yeah, that, that, that would be that would be my my pick. All right. Um, then that leads us up to the next question, which Joe would be reading by sure. Albie. This comes from LB, which is question transmog style. Now that 9.1.5 has made things a bit more alt friendly, I'm getting my army mobilized. The only real reason I do the storyline again is to get the mogs from the campaign quest rewards. Are all those available elsewhere, though? If so, it's straight to the covenants, my alts. Uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Do you guys? I haven't paid much attention to it. It depends on what you mean by the campaign quest rewards. Do you mean the... The if you're going straight to the covenants, then <laughs> you're not talking about the covenant specific ones. You're talking about the ones you get as you level uh, from 51 to, to, to 60. And you should already have those if you did those quests already. You you get transmog appearances from quest rewards, even if you couldn't equip them. Like if you did the quest, the Kyrian quest, and you, you're a plate wearer, so you took a bunch of plate rewards... If there's cloth rewards on those quests, your your priest or mage could use them. You should have them unlocked already. So you don't have to do anything. If that's what you're talking about, if it's from quest rewards, you should already have them. Um, but I, if they're talking about if they're talking about the covenant armor sets, you do have to do those quests. Yeah, I mean because those aren't well, those aren't rewards. Those are things that you get a, re- a renown level and then you can go buy. I mean, it, again, it depends on what they're talking about. There's the one that you earned through doing the Covenant campaign. 
Mm-hmm. And then there are uh, some you can buy as you hit certain levels of renown. And then there are some you need to do special covenant stuff for. Um, but everything is purchasable, whether you, all of the covenant armor is purchasable in some ways, even if for some reason you got your armor, you went through the covenant campaign and you got your armor set. And for some reason you've lost a piece or you deleted a piece because you thought you didn't need it anymore. Um, you can buy those. Mm-hmm. Um- I wonder if they'll so, open that up like they've done with some other stuff, though, in the past. Like, I remember there were some transmog items where you, like, had to choose between stuff on old quests, and some of those things are not available anymore, and they just made it available. I wonder if they'll they'll lessen that up as well. I'm pretty sure that it will be there if, if you're talking about stuff that you get from quests, because he said campaign quest rewards. If you mean that, I am positive that you should have them. Like, if there's a cloth and a leather and a mail and a plate reward, you should have all of them unlocked. That's how quests are supposed to work. Uh, it should I don't. I don't know if that. I'm not sure if that's how it is with the covenant stuff. Yeah, I, but I, because, the covenant stuff. I don't think it is. Like if it's a covenant reward, I think because of the way the covenants are set up, it doesn't work that way. But like for campaign stuff, it should be. But through the covenant campaign quest, you aren't given an option of which items to get. They give you an item as a quest quest reward, but you don't have a choice between like plate sure. and cloth yeah, and leather. Just yeah, it's just a plate reward the because you're a plate wearer. Yeah, yeah but. but that still should unlock all the other ones because it does know. the choosing for you. Like that's the way it know. works. With the, if you do all the quests that are not like that, that's how that works. Like if you, if you take your paladin through and do quests right now at like level four, you'll get the plate reward, but it'll all, you'll, you'll unlock the other ones. That's supposedly how the system works. Uh, My problem is that I don't thing... level a lot of other classes. Mm-hmm. So I'm not hundred percent on this. <laughs> the other thing is that I'm pretty sure there's no way to skip the Covenant campaign. I suppose you don't have to do it. You could just ignore it and get renown and stuff for this Covenant elsewhere. But I don't think you can... There's not a skip where you can jump to the end. Yeah, if, he's, if, if you're talking about the Covenant story specifically, you pick a Covenant and you kind of have to do their story. I mean, you can just not do it and never go, get anywhere. But if you're actually trying to advance renown, you have to do it. Um, Again, if you're talking about the leveling between like 51 and 60 before you pick a covenant, you can absolutely skip that. Uh, you could just go and do the uh, Threads of Fate thing or what have you. Or you could even, I think if you've done the covenant on your main, you can pick a covenant immediately now. Isn't that how that works? Like you can. As long as you. As long as you've played um, played through the story once, you can just go in and say, okay, I'm going to do Threads of Fate, and I'm going to join Vinthyr. I'm going to join this. I'm yes. going to join that. That's you what can I just do with do my Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I, I would get on those characters and see, like, if they can already equip those looks. That would be what I would do. Like, if you've got a cloth wearer, go and check and see if they've got the cloth stuff already and so forth. Because I don't, I don't level anybody. I haven't leveled anybody yet who can't wear plate. So I kind of can't really address this. I, I I know how it's supposed to work for for straight up quest rewards, but I don't. I can't tell you for sure. So my, one my... point of order there mm-hmm. is that if you are if you're looking for say a Vinthyr look and you've leveled a plate wearing Vinthyr and now you're playing cloth wearing Vinthyr and you want the cloth look, you have to be Vinthyr to transmog into Vinthyr gear. Even yeah, if you have okay. it unlocked, you have to be the right covenant to transmog into that. Okay, okay. I, th- I think we've covered it then. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, so who read that? Joe read that one. So now I guess this next one is you, Liz. Uh, this is one I also don't have an answer for. Question for the podcast: Why no Blizzard StarCraft movie? And I, um, I do not see a name on this one. No, there, there wasn't a name. I don't know if that's supposed to be a movie or not. Now that I look at it. I, I'm looking at it. I oh. think it's why 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 no Blizzard Starcraft more. Um, yeah. So I mean that's 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 a very good question. So I could tell you that they could probably give you a million reasons why. Uh, Starcraft was very popular, still is very popular as a competitive esport uh, elsewhere in the world. But it, our RTS is where game companies are going to be d- like dumping their time. We talked about this before on the podcast. Uh, God, months ago now. Uh, we had a question about RTSs in general and why isn't there a Warcraft 4? And it's sort of the same thing. Like, is there a market for I think there is, but does Blizzard at the end of the day or Activision Blizzard have the research that their money people need to say, yes, go ahead and do this thing? Because that's what it boils down to. 
right? That's why we got, that's why Riot made Valorant because first person shooters were coming back into style. Uh, first person competitive team based shooters um, with superpowers. That was a thing that you know now they wanted to capitalize on. Uh, before yeah, that, Overwatch, Apex Legends. You know, there's there's games telling you that this will work. But where are the major RTSs that are capturing people's minds and hearts? Now, that's not to say, like, if they were to release StarCraft 3, that people wouldn't lose their mind over it. I think they would. But also, I think they also have to figure out where the story goes from where they left it at the end of StarCraft 2, which was a pretty finite story ending, because I think they, do, they, they were under the realization that they wouldn't be coming back here anytime soon. And if they were to do something more StarCraft related... Do you make an RTS or do you go in a completely different direction using the IP, which don't forget, they thought about doing that a long time ago with uh, Nova and then just didn't. And and Nova turned into the first person shooter based uh, idea that eventually evolved into Titan, which then eventually evolved into Overwatch. Um, so, like, it's not that it's done. It's just that I don't think they know what they want to do with it yet. And I think that's I really the problem. I'm going to remind you that like back in 2019, when there were like a bunch just before BlizzCon 2019, there were a whole bunch of stories about what was going to be at BlizzCon 19. And one of the stories was about a project called Mars. Mm -hmm. And Mars was apparently supposed to be a first person Overwatch game or using the Overwatch engine, but StarCraft. Yeah, like a revisiting of Nova. Yeah, and that was in development and it got canceled for Overwatch 2. Like that is one of the things that supposed, according to the news stories at the time, that was in development. They were working on it. They they'd actually had internal builds of it. One person left Blizzard and then Im immediately posted stories saying, "Yeah, this this was something I was working on, and now it's gone." Uh, so you, they have they have apparently taken up StarCraft several times now, and I, it keeps not happening. I just had so. a thought based off of what you just said with something that might be coming out in the very near future. And one of the things that I think might push that to maybe get taken back up again would be to see how the new Metroid prime is received when it comes out, because it's still in development. We've been hearing about it now. It's gone through a bunch of, of trouble and stuff like that, but it's very anticipated. It's highly anticipated. And it is very much a game in that same type of, of genre. It's a first person adventure shooter. And if that does well, they might look at it and say, hey, a sci-fi first-person adventure shooter is the rage right now. Why don't we dust off this Mars? Why don't we dust off Nova and see what we can do with it and use the StarCraft IP? Because there's still stories that they can tell there. There's still things that they could do. I just think they need the right impetus to do it. Do you, do you mean? Did you mean Metroid Dread or do you mean another Metroid no, Prime? No, Metroid Prime. They, they announced Metroid, Metroid Prime 4 a long time ago. It's been in development hell for a while, and it's actually like they've scrapped teams, scrapped builds, started over from scratch. Metroid Dread was actually a, a project that was started a while ago um, and was released very much with the idea of let's see if people still want Metroid. There's a whole thing about, about this. Um, and it did really, really well. Like Metroid Dread is a fantastic game and it showed that people still want Metroid content. And then almost immediately after Dread was announced, when we had one of those Nintendo shorts, uh, they talked about specifically that Metroid 4 is still in production. It hasn't been forgotten. It's still in production with Bayonetta 3, right? Like these are things that are still coming. Uh, they're still being worked on and they're going to be released at some point in the near future or in the future, I shouldn't say near future, uh, but they're still being worked on. And I think that when Metroid Prime 4 releases, if it does well, we could maybe see another StarCraft style IP game come out. So we'll see. That's my two cents. But yeah, I, I think about basically the, the easy question, easy answer to this is reasons. Like, you know, quite a few of them, but we don't know. We, we have no idea. As for when it was a StarCraft movie, I mean, it's it's kind of heavily based on, on you know, like Alien. Like that's a lot of technically just, it's a very based on 40 K, but we could talk about that later. Yeah. That's, you know, <laughs> I, I think the thing about the, the, you can't really get away with saying the Zerg aren't pretty directly from alien. No, uh, the, Zerg, but, the Zerg, well, we could, we could talk about that. I'm not, I don't want to argue, but like they're, they're Tyranids. They're 100% At any tyranids. rate, if the Warcraft movie had done better outside of China, uh, where it did extremely well, the, the money it made, it made mostly in China. If the, if it had been a blockbuster, then there probably would be a StarCraft movie being discussed somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. So, but yeah. Uh, next question. Uh, I guess that's you, Joe. Uh, we should have time for one more, right? We should have time for one more, which is which is good. Yeah. Uh, this is for the. Uh, this is from Amaris or Ar Aramis. I apologize. 
Uh, now patch 9.2 has been announced. They said that they are, that we are going to the place where it was intended to create afterlives. I think this is the best opportunity to introduce another version of player housing where Blizzard can give us our own small plot of Shadowlands Realm as a reward for stopping the Jailer. Similar to the plots provided uh, in Wildstar where you could build your own house, the customization cosmetics would come from all the achievements already earned and would be earned in the future and also possibly from crafting. This means that players can be rewarded in playing old content and getting old content achievement at and at the same plane the current content would equally be rewarded i know blizzard already gave us garrisons class order halls and now covenants but i still think there's a good opportunity to give us the best player housing maybe patch 9.2.5 i want player housing don't get me wrong i want it i've been a proponent of it for years i've been asking for it probably since burning crusade uh i honestly legitimately do not think player housing will ever be implemented in World of Warcraft in the way that it was in Wildstar or even Final Fantasy XIV. I do not think the system is built for it. Now, if they wanted to do something later on and revisit it in like a later patch or as a feature that they implement as a core feature to a future expansion, I think that would be fine because then that we talk about this a lot. I know I've talked about it a lot and maybe you, you don't like the sound of my voice when I talk about it and I don't blame you. I don't like the sound of my own voice either. But the code in this game is fragile still. They've updated it a lot and they've they've done a lot to it and they improve it and they continue to improve it and clean it up. Player housing is essentially spinning up another instance server at best case scenario or another instance at best case scenario. And then it has to be for every single player. Another game that tried to offer player housing but couldn't do it to every single player back in the day was City of Heroes. They didn't have the memory or resources to dedicate to a million instances. And I want you that that's just them. And that's back then a million instances. That's not the same thing as having instant servers for dungeons or raids where there's a finite number of them. And if you are 20 people in a raid, that's 20 people sharing an instance. Imagine if that raid instance had to be split up for all 20 of those people in that raid. Now for player housing, you have to do the same thing and they're persistent or they have to be in persistent in a way that they can be recalled quickly and easily. Imagine every active subscriber in Warcraft logging in to their own instance that's spun up. I can hear the servers crying from if it's not a core feature, if it's not something you you plan for long term, I don't think it's going to happen. I definitely not going to happen at 9.2. Could this be something we see in, in 10.0? If they really felt so inclined, maybe if they can figure out how to get that without burning the servers down, sure. Could we see it later on, 11.0 or another expansion? Maybe. But I think that's your big hang up. I don't think it's that they don't want to do it. I think it's how do you do it with as large of an active subscriber base as you have? Because don't forget, WoW is still the largest active MMO on the market and still not, and still be able to deliver your core game to everybody without making the system cry. I think that's your hurdle. Sorry, long answer. <laughs> what do you guys oh, think? It was a good one to have, Liz. I, I, hmm. putting putting player housing like this as part of Shadowlands does offer more creativity. Like if you're if you're thinking of doing this as like a spun off a little afterlife zone, then doing it in Shadowlands does let you transcend all of the traditional architecture styles of Azeroth, or even transcend architecture you know because the shadowlands doesn't necessarily have to follow the rules of gravity you can do this is an afterlife that is made up of basically what all of these you know it it is what its leaders want it to be basically so if you had like a little tiny corner of shadowlands just for your own it could be anything and that's kind of a cool idea but at the same time everything joe said was correct and this is kind of this is a big technical hurdle particularly since the game was not originally designed to support stuff like this so you're kind of kludging code on on top of old code and um god, i really want player housing oh god i like, want it too i want it so, so badly so bad i want to build my little house and i want to have it i want it to have like one of those neat little blood elf spires which that blood elf architecture that you just don't see anywhere anymore and uh but yeah, Shadowlands gives us would give you kind of more flexibility because you could really turn that into a playground and do whatever you want. But having something on Azeroth or one of the other 
you know, land masses that we have actually visited that are a real physical place, uh, that kind of, that grounds you a little bit in the story and brings a different kind of presence because Shadowlands is a place we're visiting now, but, you know, do you want to, do you call Shadowlands home? I don't know. But if Blizzard does implement player housing, there's nothing to say you couldn't choose to have your house in, uh, you know, in Northrend, or have your house in the Eastern Kingdoms, or just, you know, you could have it anywhere, because it's pro- it's likely going to be something instanced off on its own, and you could just choose. You could decide where it goes, maybe. And then you could say, no, I want, I want my house to be in the afterlife. I think that's really cool. Or, I want my house to be, you know, in the, over in this neighborhood in Silver Moon City, you know? Uh, say, so I'm, I'm for choices here. Matt? Um... I was just thinking that if they basically let you create a little pocket afterlife to to be your your reward for stopping the jailer, maybe that could like you could pop in there and like once the expansion's over, that's where you go when you die. Instead of just being randomly like you know near the nearest spirit healer, you actually pop up at your house in the Shadowlands, and your and spirit then, like, butler goes, "Oh, hey, how's it going?" Yeah, and you could you have the option to respawn there or to be sent to your body. And you wouldn't have to corpse run anymore. That would be kind of cool. That would be, you know, because then it would be like, if you wanted to make it like a feature for the next game, it would be kind of neat if it was based around that. So, yeah, that, but that's all I thought of. I I don't expect it until I hear Blizzard say they're going to work on it. It it certainly isn't something that they wanted to do before, but a lot of people aren't there anymore that used to kind of be standing in the way. The games that have it too. Yeah. So, a lot of the people who are there now, uh, the people that, you know, uh, I'm going to just be blunt about this. The sea change that we saw from Eon about what World of Warcraft is and isn't going to be focusing on mm-hmm. that we saw before 9.2 came out. The the idea of, yeah, we're going to be making these changes. We're going to go for more accessibility. There were certain people who absolutely hated that idea. And those people aren't there anymore. So I am more optimistic that we might actually get player housing. But it's still not something I'm, I necessarily absolutely expect. Also, I don't want it rushed. Not at all. Yeah, I definitely don't want it to be bad. Um, if we're going to do this after like 17 years, it would be nice if it was good. Um, but yeah, definitely not something I'm expecting or holding my breath on. But I would like it if they did it. Uh, but I think that's going to do us for time, folks. So Blizzard Watch is made possible due to the generous contributions at patreon.com slash Blizzard Watch. Your continued support means this podcast site and community is able to thrive and grow. Blizzard Watch supporters enjoy exclusive benefits like early access to the podcast, a better chance of having your question answered on our podcast or the queue, and an ads-free site experience. Uh, before I talk about anything, Liz, uh, did you want to talk about the possible Patreon thing or do you want to wait Um, Well, I mean, I can talk about it a little bit. Next week, we are going to be starting kind of a a pledge drive for Patreon. And um, I mean, it's not going to be much. We're going to be reminding y'all a little more frequently that we are indeed supported by Patreon. And particularly these podcasts, which have no advertising in them, these are here because of your support and no other reason. They're here because you support us and you like listening to them. And that's why we do podcasts. And that's how we do podcasts. Um, but we're going to start uh, kind of a bigger push next week. And I also, uh, I have I have hopes we might have some new merch, but that, that may be, that may happen, that may not happen uh, if you wanted to support us in that way. So, uh, next week, we'll be talking about that a little more. Okay. I wanted to make sure to get that out before I did the whole thing where I say, if you have a question for the show, you can email it to podcast at blizzardwatch.com, subject line podcast or blizzard watch, so you know it's for the show. Or you can hit us up on Discord. We have the patron Q and podcast questions channel for, for Patreon supporters. Uh, and we've got the Q questions channel if you can't be a Patreon supporter. But being a Patreon supporter is really helpful because as Liz and Joe have said in the past, this podcast and all of our other podcasts we have lore watch and tavern watch they're all supported by patreon and if we don't get that support eventually that they, they're we can't we just can't keep doing them it's you know it's something that we do because you guys make it possible um before i log out though before we all go away and do other things i did want to say that we here at blizzard watch support the workers at activision blizzard and their struggle for a more inclusive and safer workplace um go team we definitely want you guys to have a safer, better workplace. Uh, if you're listening, Mr. Kodak, resigning is not a problem. You should just do it. Don't, don't think about it. Just do it. Uh, 
but this has been the Blizzard Watch Podcast. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here with us, uh, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>